Hi and welcome to Quirky Books with Katie. Today I'm going to be talking about the best books that I read during the year of 2015. Now I will admit that 2015 was not the best reading year for me. I only read 48 books during the year, which to kind of give you a reference for that, I read over 150 books in 2013 and over 100 books in 2014, so this year was definitely a lot less. And I will also say that of the 48 books I read, I think I only gave five stars to maybe two or three of those books. So today I'm going to be talking about the 10 best books that I read during the year and I'm going to be counting those books down from number 10 up to number one and I hope you guys enjoy this video. Starting off at number 10 we have A Sense of the Infinite by Hilary T. Smith and this is a book that I feel like not a lot of people have read. It's more popular in the blogging community than in the booktube community but this book is about two girls who have just graduated high school and they're going off to college and throughout their entire lives they've basically been best friends. However throughout their second semester of their senior year of high school they've kind of been drifting apart. And what I loved so much about this book was its portrayal of friend breakups. And I feel like YA covers a lot about romantic breakups and romantic love, but I feel like friendship and friendship breakups is often something that's not talked about. And while I did feel like there were some issues with this book, I absolutely adored how it portrayed that topic. It was very realistic and for me very relatable because that is something that I've dealt with before. So if you're looking for a very good friendship based YA book, I would definitely recommend this one. Number nine on my list is Words and Their Meanings by Kate Bassett and now this book is relatively unknown. I've only maybe talk to maybe one or two other people that have read it but this book is about a girl who loses one of her closest relatives even though this relative was her uncle he was basically like a brother to her and when he passes away she really doesn't know what to do with her life and she kind of turns herself into one of her favorite singers who's Patti Smith and idolizes her and kind of drowns in what kind of becomes depression and this book is about kind of having to deal with loss through writing because the main character loves to write and that's kind of how she's remembering her passed away relative and I thought that this book was unlike anything I've ever read. It dealt with grief in a very realistic way and I felt like the way that it portrayed grief through a girl who was grieving by idolizing one of her favorite singers was a very interesting and unique twist and I just love the way the book this book was written. It had some very memorable quotes and passages in it. Now, number eight on my list is Speechless by Hannah Harrington, and this book was very popular on the blogging community probably two or three years ago. This book is about a girl who is one of but she tells a rumor that causes a lot of like this was just a very interesting way at dealing with how favorite book in the series. I really like the second one, Crown of Midnight. The reason why this book is on my list is that I really did think that there were some problems with this book, especially when it deals with characterization. Some of the characters did a complete 180, but I flew through this book. I felt like it was a lot more interesting than some of the other books, and even though I was reading this during a time in school when I was very busy, I finished it in like three days. I could not put this book down, and while I do think that there are some problems with this series, I really enjoy it and I would definitely recommend it. If you're kind of scared of the hype that surrounds this book, I would say try it try the first book and if you don't like it that's okay but I do think that this is one of the best uh, YA fantasy series that YA has to offer. Number six on my list is P.S. I Still Love You by Jenny Han. This is the second book in the To All the Boys I've Loved Before duology. I think the first book in this duology was on my favorite books of last year video. I'll link that video down below but this book kind of takes off where the first book ends. The first book is about a girl named Lara Jean and when she was younger she wrote love letters to all of the boys that she liked and they accidentally get mailed out and chaos ensues. And I feel like this book was a very realistic portrayal of teen romance 
I feel like in a lot of contemporaries the characters get together and all is good and that's really all you see but this book kind of deals with what happens after two characters get together and kind of the strains that can be, get put on relationships and something else that I loved about this book was the family dynamic something great that Jenny Han does not only in this series but also in her Summer I Turn Pretty series and if you're looking for just a nice cute contemporary with a good family dynamic I would definitely recommend this duology. Number five on my list is The Bronze Horseman by Paulina Simons. This book is an adult romance novel that takes place during World War II in Russia. I love historical fiction books. I also like books that are set in Russia and I felt like this was a very interesting portrayal of Russia during World War II and I loved the romance in this book. As you can tell this book is pretty big. It's probably about 800 pages but I felt like it was good that it was that long because you really got to see the romance between the main two characters, Tatiana and Alexander, develop. And I just thought that this was definitely one of the best romances I've ever read. And I'm thinking about continuing this series in 2016. Now, number four on my list is yet another contemporary. I feel like for me, this was definitely the year of good contemporaries, and that is Open Road Summer by Emery Lord. This is another very great friendship-based contemporary book. It's about two friends and named Lila and Reagan, I believe, and Lila is a famous singer and she goes on tour and brings Reagan with her and it's kind of the story of their friendship on tour. This is a very fun contemporary but it also has some deeper elements to it and this was one of the only books of the year that I gave five out of five stars. I really liked it when I read it and it helps me get out of a reading slump and if you're looking for some new contemporary authors to try I would definitely recommend checking out Emery Lord. Now we're kind of getting down to the nitty gritty of this list. These are the top three books that I read all year. And surprise, surprise, these are all actually contemporaries. Number three on my list is Say Anything by Sarah Dessen. If you guys have been watching me on my channel for a while, you know that I love Sarah Dessen. I have read every single one of her 12 books, and this one is probably one of the better ones that I've read by her. It's a bit more dark. It's about a girl whose brother gets into a drunk driving accident and severely injures someone and gets thrown in jail and kind of the aftermath that it has on their family and I just thought that this book was very relatable. The main character kind of had problems dealing with her parents expectations and it was one of the darker Sarah Dessen books so if one of your problems with Sarah Dessen is that her books are just too happy or too cutesy I would try this one. It's very well written. As I've said, she's written 11 books before this, so this is definitely one of the better ones that she's written, and I was definitely not disappointed with this book this year. Now, my number two book of the year was a bit of a surprise. If you guys have been watching me for a while, you know that I've mentioned in some of my overhyped books video that I've read not only The Fault in Our Stars by John Green, but also Paper Towns by John Green. And I gave The Fault in Our Stars two out of five stars. I did not finish Paper Towns. So that makes it a surprise that my number two book of the year is Looking for Alaska by John Green. This is one of the first books that I read during the year, and I just remember loving it. I felt like it was just so relatable in its portrayal of depression and kind of its debunking of the trope of the manic pixie dream girl. It's about a boy named Pudge who goes to boarding school, falls in love with a girl named Alaska, and he kind of sees her as this manic pixie dream girl, and she's not. And I just remember loving this book, and I still think about it from time to time, which is my mark of a really great book if you're still thinking about it months after you read it. So if you read The Fault in Our Stars or Paper Towns and it just wasn't your cup of tea, I would say try this one. This is my favorite John Green book, and I'm thinking now about possibly picking up one of his other books as well. Now, unlike last year, where I had a lot of trouble kind of picking my number one book of the year, this year was easy. Last year there were three books that I loved and I was really having a problem, like one, two, three, like where should I rate them? My number one book of the year was a book that I read back in February and I absolutely loved it when I read it. It made me laugh, it made me cry, it was one of the, it was the best book I read all year, it was probably one of my new favorite books and that book is I'll Meet You There by Heather Demetrios. Now, not a lot of people have read this, but it's about a girl who lives in a small town and works at this inn called the Paradise Motel. And while she is there, she meets one of her co-workers named Josh, who is an, a vet from 
either Afghanistan or Iraq, I believe, and he comes back with some PTSD, and they kind of both help each other deal with their problems, and I just loved this book. This was definitely a Katie book. It was a good contemporary that had a lot of emotion and depth to it. As I said, I cried multiple times throughout this book. It is a very emotional and deep book, and I absolutely loved it. It, that's why it's my favorite book of the year but I read this book back in February and I have not read anything better since then. So those are my favorite books for the year of 2015. Let me know in the comments down below what your guys favorite books of the year are. I'm always open to getting some recommendations. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you subscribe to my channel and I will talk to you again soon.